Hi, hello and welcome to my channel Shimna Study Corner. Today we are going to discuss a poem in the standard 10 English textbook titled Fire and Ice. But before that, if you are watching my channel for the first time, please subscribe. Also, enable the bell icon to get notified whenever a new video gets uploaded. So let's get going. Fire and Ice by Robert Frost Robert Lee Frost was an American poet who was known for his realistic depictions of rural life and his command of American colloquial speech. Frost frequently wrote about settings from rural life. He is the only poet to receive four Pulitzer Prizes for poetry. He was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal and was named Poet Laureate of Vermont. Let's read the poem now. Some say the world will end in fire. Some say in ice. From what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. Before we move into the line-by-line -line description of this poem, we must understand one thing. Literally speaking, the poem is quite simple. The poet talks about two things which can be potential reasons for the destruction of the world. The first one is fire or extreme heat. The second one is ice or extreme cold. We must understand that the poet wants to convey something deeper than the literal meaning. Here, this poem, Fire and Ice, is a symbolic poem. And fire and ice, both these things used in this poem, are symbols of something else. Fire represents the desire in human beings. And ice is a symbol of the hatred that human beings bear for each other. Now, let's move on to the stanza-wise explanation of the poem. The first stanza goes like this. Some say the world will end in fire. Some say in ice. From what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. So these are the lines spoken by the poet. What does he want to convey? He says that there is a divided opinion regarding the reason for the destruction of the world. Some people believe that the world is going to end because of fire and some, pe some other people believe that the world is going to end due to ice. But he says that from what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. He says that according to his experience, students please note, from what I have tasted of desire means from what he has experienced personally. From whatever personal experience he has had with desirous people, he holds with those people. That means he agrees with those people who favor fire. It means that he agrees with those people's opinion who says that fire is a good reason or fire is destructive enough to bring the world to an end. Now, let's move on to the next stanza. But, if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. So here, in this stanza, he, he changes his opinion. He doesn't wave off the suggestion that ice can destroy the world. On second thoughts, he feels that ice is also destructive enough to spoil the world. Here, ice represents the insensitivity or hatred that human being has towards each other. So he feels that if the world had a second chance to meet its end, to perish means to meet the end. So if the world had a second chance to meet its end, he thought that he has had enough of experience with hatred also to say that or to suggest that ice would be 
a strong tool to destroy the world. Here, the word suffice means to be sufficient or to be enough. With that, we have come to an end of the explanation of the poem. Now, let's see what the rhyme scheme of the poem is. The poem's rhyme scheme is A B A A B C B C B. Next, we are going to discuss about the poetic devices in the poem. The first one is alliteration. Alliteration is the occurrence of the same letter or sound at the beginning of adjacent or closely connected words. Here, we have a few examples of alliteration. The next poetic device used in this poem is imagery. Imagery is the use of visually descriptive or figurative language in a literary work. The poet has also made use of symbolism in this poem. Symbolism is the use of symbols to represent ideas or qualities. Then we have anaphora. Anaphora is a repetition of a word or a phrase at the beginning of successive clauses. At last, we have enjambment. Enjambment is a continuation of a sentence without a pause beyond the end of a line, couplet or stanza. With that, we wind up today's video. I hope all of you have benefited from this video. For more videos, subscribe my channel, Shimna Study Corner. Like, share and let me know of your valuable comments below. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.